Uh, it was recommended to me by a few people today to speak about what I love, but we don't have time for that. So in the spirit of Mark Twain, here's something I know, here's a talk I know about. Uh, I've been a gaming technician for eight years uh, at a test lab, kind of a quasi regulator. Uh, the cabinets, uh, the old mechanical wheels used to spin perpendicular to the view of play. This is still required in modern virtual machines. Uh, the logic box in the center of the machines where all the processing and random number generation happens. The back plane is connect the city out to all of the rest of the peripherals in the machine. Uh, the coin acceptor is usually mounted on the front of the door, banknote acceptor on the right with a stacker underneath it where all the notes are kept. Uh, additional security cage around the note stacker. Uh, the hopper takes up the bulk of the space in the front of this picture. Unfortunately, there's no printer depicted, um, but you can also see the mechanical routing for the coins going to the cash box or the hopper. Uh, the dynamic, bu dynamic buttons with tiny displays on them are pretty much the norm nowadays. Big touch screens, uh, and dual screens are standard, loudspeakers and amps that need to be toned down for use in an office and uh, more lighting arrays and, and uh, ballast than you can poke a stick at. Uh, mechanical optical, optical switches monitor door and internal machine access. Uh, some doors require multiple monitoring points and monitoring methods. Uh, some doors require monitoring whilst powered, powered off. Yeah. Uh, the software is separated into three distinct components to ideally change as little as possible in every game. Uh, but in reality, it's a lot messier than that. And the distinction between game and platform is fairly loose and differs between manufacturers. But the rules of the game are always the same. Return to player is the important thing, the statistical average. For a return to player of 80%, if I put in 100 bucks, I expect to get about 80 bucks back. If I put in the 80 bucks again, I expect to get about 72. Um, Sorry, I've totally and it's changed on the display and the not on the screen. Ah, oh, right. Yep. <laughs> That's right. That RTP line always took longer than the slide. I couldn't work out why. <laughs> What's the picture on the right? What's Sorry? It? Was it like a speaker? Uh, that one, ah, oh, at the top? Yeah, bottom one. Uh, oh, the bottom one was uh, one of those Ouija balls that predicts the future. Oh, yeah, yeah, Outlook yeah, yeah. not so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so your balance is going to end up at zero. You're up to there? Yeah. Okay. Right. Come on. I'll press the press buttons. Do you want me to do the next one? Uh, yeah. So, end up with a balance of zero. The return to player must be maintained, so how can we add a jackpot to one of these games? The short answer is we've got to reduce the re return to player of the reels. If we pay a little less on a lot of the wins on the reels, we can save up all that RTP and pay out a big jackpot at one, one point in time. Uh, so it's all about trade-offs. You can't get anything for free. So uh, apart from the usual uh, lines, which are pretty understandable, there are also ways which pay, pay for prizes. These are a lot more complex and bypass the old rules, uh, a lot more difficult to analyze. There are also things such as patterns that pay right to left or patterns that pay any, anywhere. Uh, some, substitutes, some symbols are substitutes and can uh, act for other symbols, but these rules can often be complicated. Uh, jackpots are usually combinations of, of symbols on the screen, um, but can also be triggered by uh, mystery jackpots. Uh, legislation requires clear and understandable artwork and representations of reality. So if we show a six-sided dice, we have to have a one in six probability, unless it's those weird dice there, you can probably get away with anything. Uh, subjective judgments uh, are made on a lot of the artwork and usually precedent is used. So we try and find the closest game with the closest kind of rule and the closest sort of phrasing and see how close that is. Uh, as mentioned before, the physical real, the virtual reels must represent physical reels. A real stop has to be a single stop and then the symbols above and below are mapped and displayed, uh, looping around as a physical reel would. But it's really easy to get away from, 
from these rules. Anything not perpendicular, not circular, or not spinning is fair game. So if we take one of those real reels, turn it 90 degrees, we've now got a completely different game, completely new rules. Players can expect to find the return to player and top and, top and bottom five wins on the machine somewhere. I think these displays are fairly hard to understand. All you can tell is this is hard to win. Uh, Queensland used to have an hourly spend, which was much more human digestible. Uh, New Zealand has some really good rules. They've basically stolen all of our rules and added in a $500 win cap and a $2,000 jackpot cap to stop players chasing large wins that are never going to happen. Uh, and New South Wales has mandated that broadcast information must be broadcast fast, often, and, uh, and frequently. Uh, Queensland went the other way and dictated that an EGM must never broadcast its, its uh, audit information except for uh, under command of a controller, which guarantees incompatibility forevermore. The bright side is all the majority of the machines run Linux, um, so there's free software uh, in gambling. Uh, I'm not going to talk more about uh, the source code analysis and, and the kind of testing we do, but I'm afraid that'll have to wait for another time. Thanks. Woo!